climate change lie number five exposed. Our current warmth is unusual. Claim. Our current warmth is unusual. This is a claim made by many warming alarmists and news outlets. 2014 was the warmest year on record. That's according to separate studies by U.S. Space Agency, NASA, and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Some attempt to jack up the alarm by implying that our world will be scorched by the upcoming warmth. But in an ice age? <laughs> Counterclaim. Our current warmth is not unusual. Even a cursory glimpse at our world's climate history shows that the modern warming period is relatively weak compared to past episodes of warmth. Fact. We currently live in an ice age interglacial called the Holocene. Those two little white things at the poles are made of ice, and they greatly affect the climate, reducing potential rainfall and jacking up the thermal gradient so we have more violent storms. Counterclaim. Greenland ice cores are a proxy for global climate health. Out of all the locations on planet Earth, Greenland is the one most likely to represent the entire planet. This is not only because of ice core proxies for temperature and other climatic properties, but also because of its location at the core of northern hemisphere glaciation, which determines whether or not we're in a glacial or interglacial period. The southern hemisphere contains no such location. For one thing, the southern half of the planet has a far larger percentage of ocean, 80.9%, than does the northern, 60.7%, a difference of more than 20%. For another, Antarctica is surrounded by a circumpolar current that effectively shuts off Antarctica from the rest of the world. Tropical interaction with Greenland's glaciers remains far larger because of the Gulf Stream injecting equatorial warmth into the polar latitudes. Fact. The medieval warm period was a global phenomenon. With any global trend, there are going to be outliers and exceptions. This is the natural range of variability. But the overall average trend is something that affects the entire globe. These scientists and their papers talk about evidence of the medieval warm period and Little Ice Age in the proxy data of locations all around the globe, both northern and southern hemispheres. Fact. Most of Earth's history has been far warmer than today. Here's a graph of Earth's climate for the last few billion years. Notice all of the time Earth has been far warmer than today. Even the Jurassic Cretaceous cooling period was far warmer than today. Were there deserts during those warmer periods? Of course, but they were far smaller and far drier than the deserts of today. The polar deserts during most of the last few billion years were entirely missing. Most of Earth was a veritable garden compared to today. Fact. No scorched Earth and no mass extinctions. The extreme warmth of past epochs did not lead to the Earth becoming scorched. It did not lead to mass extinctions either. Life has thrived throughout most of the past, with mass extinctions occurring only very rarely. Thank goodness for that. Some have blamed warmth, but at no time did warmth become deadly for the globe as a whole. Locally, perhaps, but not globally. The following timeline shows the position of the five main mass extinctions. The first, at the Ordovician-Silurian boundary, about 439 million years ago, occurred when temperatures had plummeted for millions of years toward a major ice age, but CO2 levels had reached a local peak far higher than today. The second major extinction at the Devonian-Carboniferous boundary, about 363 million years ago, occurred after a less dramatic fall in temperatures and after the beginning of a massive carbon sequestration that ended up giving us the bulk of our coal and petroleum. The third major extinction occurred at the Permian-Triassic boundary 245 million years ago, when CO2 levels had remained relatively low and constant for dozens of millions of years and about five million years after a temperature high. 
The fourth major extinction happened at the Triassic-Jurassic boundary about 208 million years ago, after CO2 had reached a new lower peak and had started to go down again, and during a relatively steady period of high temperatures globally. The fifth major extinction occurred at the Cretaceous-Tertiary boundary, sometimes referred to as the KT boundary, 65 million years ago, after a minor cooling trend had started, and some 60 million years after CO2 levels had begun to slide into a trough of extreme scarcity like nothing before in Earth's long history. We don't know what caused the first four extinctions, but it seems fairly certain that temperature was not the main factor in most of them. Of course, the resolution on our paleoclimate history is still fairly coarse. New information in the future may tell us more about the details of our climate past. We've had long stretches of far higher temperatures and no known extinctions during them for 120 million years during the Cambrian and Ordovician periods, for 50 million years during the Silurian and Devonian periods, for 90 million years during the Triassic and Jurassic periods, and for the better part of 100 million years during the Cretaceous and first half of the Tertiary, disrupted by meteors about 65 million years ago, and by an unusually rapid temperature spike at the Paleocene-Eocene boundary about 55.5 million years ago, or the Petum minor extinction event. But during that warmer Petum period, many species benefited and expanded, so the only appreciable extinctions from warming were offset by other species increasing. Fact. Our sun is warming very slowly. Some critics have claimed that the sun in the past was far cooler. They claim that the warmer Earth was the result of far greater CO2 concentrations to make up for the sun's dimmer output. During the Cretaceous thermal maximum between 85 and 90 million years ago, Earth was considerably warmer for 5 million years. It also had as much as 4,000 parts per million CO2, according to Dr. Richard Norris of the Scripps Institute. Correlation does not always guarantee causation. This is why scientists try to remain skeptical, even though what they're really after is restraint and humility. The most obvious idea is not always the right idea. According to Norris, the high latitudes were about 25 degrees Celsius, while the tropical sea surface temperatures were 5 to 7 degrees Celsius warmer than today. Still, life thrived. The sun has been warming up rather steadily at a rate of plus 10% for every billion years. During the Cretaceous thermal maximum only 90 million years ago, the sun was approximately 0.854% cooler. That's less than 1% difference from today's insulation. That's not a large difference in sunlight, but it's a large difference in CO2. The fact that CO2 and temperature do not match up over most of Earth's history suggests that CO2 and temperature have a very low correlation. Something else was controlling the temperature. In other words, CO2 is not the gorilla pushing global temperature. Conclusion. Today is cold compared to most of Earth's history. This doesn't mean that there are no hot areas. It means that the average global temperature is relatively cold compared to epochs of the past. All that ice depresses the overall average, making our climate cooler and far more stormy. It also means that we're still drier than the far warmer ages of the past. We remain dangerously close to the next glacial period, and dangerously close to the bottom of Earth's overall temperature range. Life thrived at the top of that range, but remains threatened with hardship and extinction at the bottom.